Hello, boos and ghouls, and welcome to Terry's True Paranormal Experiences. I would like, if I may, to take you along on a strange journey. This first one I call The Beast of Barton Road. It was the fall of 1986. I had a friend who had had a birthday and he wanted to go visit his family that lived about 20 miles away in a very small town called Barton. Barton is an old backwater mining town with a population of about 450 people. As with many old mining towns, it seemed the cold permeated the air and covered everything with a dreary, dirty layer that settled into the pores of every home and business. I didn't want to go because my car was still broken down, but he didn't want to make the trip alone, so finally I gave in. We ended up taking the bus into downtown, for lack of a better word, to Barton, which was beside a railroad track, and we met his mom, who drove us back to his old home. The family was nice, but kind of strange. The arrangements were that his father would drive us back to Cumberland. We stayed several hours, and I kept looking at the clock, waiting to leave. But the time went on, and the evening was turning into night. Everyone was starting to go to bed, except for the father. He was a rather old, gruff man. When my friend asked his father to take us home finally, the father replied that he wasn't driving after dark. I was very stubborn in those days and determined to get home that night. So I told my friend politely that I needed to get home and I'd just walk. I really wanted to get home and away from this strange family, even if it killed me. My friend said he'd come along too because he wanted to get home also. So we set off toward the interstate highway that would take us back to Cumberland and maybe where we could hitchhike the other way back home. Barton has few street lights, and there were none on the stretch of road to get to the interstate. Fortunately, the moon was full that night and acted as a very dim nightlight in the darkness. The road was built on a flat clearing with rows of corn that had long been dead and broken to the ground by countless winds and rains on each side of the road. The only obstruction from the fields of corn was a strip of land with mounds of dirt that ran along the road like small waves where the road had cut through a series of small mounds. We were only about a quarter of the way along the trip when I heard a growl. I asked my friend if he had heard what I heard. His eyes were wide open and he frantically shook his head. I didn't hear that, he said. Something growled again. Without saying a word, I turned and looked at my friend, who looked at me wide-eyed again, and said, I didn't hear that either. We stopped and looked around us, but no one could hear or see anything moving. We started walking faster. As I walked, I looked around me, but no signs of movement of a dog or anything. When the growl broke to silence again, we picked up pace even more. We knew better than to run, should it be a dog or wild animal. The sounds were originating to our right somewhere around the fields or median beside the road, yet neither of us saw anything. Suddenly, a patch of clouds started to darken the face of the moon. As our sole source of light faded, panic gripped my heart. Ahead was a bend in the road, and I hoped that right around the corner might be a stray farmhouse or perhaps some place with some light, any light. We rounded the bend, and I had a fear of a wild animal jumping on me from behind, tearing me apart. The deep growl happened again, but fortunately I could still hear it like it was a distance away. Still, in a few quick bounds, it could be on us at any time. My imagination started going wild, and even briefly played a thought that this could be a werewolf. <laughs> yes. I said a werewolf. It was only a passing thought, yet in the darkness, fear can bring some wild things to mind. Suddenly there, in the straightaway ahead of us, in the middle of the road was a street light. We had almost reached the interstate. Still the growling followed along the silence. It continued until we reached the safety of the street lamp. There it stopped. Still from that lighting, we saw nothing around us. Was it an animal that managed to evade our sights? 
or was it something more in the middle of the night? Was it something in the paranormal or something in the unknown? I'll never know. We never caught a ride that night and it was nearly dawn before we got back to town. And I've never, ever been back to that stretch of road since. Well, thank you for joining us all. May you have pleasant dreams. <laughs>